personal idea of what I think is happening is people watch TV for a certain thing and people go to the web for another thing that has nothing to do with TV. So a lot of people, a lot of big names get money to go to the web and they don't do very well because they're thinking in the form of TV. They're not thinking in the form of the other, right? People who are in the, on the web already, they don't have TV. They can't do that. They don't have the camera, they don't have the money, they don't have the expenses, they don't have the wardrobe, they don't have the costumes, they don't have the location. So they're thinking in a different frame outside the box. And so people like that and they go for it. And so I know from my experience, the things that we do, I'm not saying we couldn't do it on television, but the transition is easier and we're able to portray, there is drama in the web, but it's, it's closer to home and it's closer to reality as opposed to TV where they have to fill ratings. Your ratings are your own when you're online. Your audience is gonna come or they're not gonna come. You don't have the quota to fill, you don't have add people to satisfy, it's just you. So if people like your content, no matter what it is, they'll stay for you, so you have a free range to do whatever you want for your niche audience. How long did it take you to build your audience from where you started? Um, we started in November of 2009, but we did our own thing off YouTube at first because we didn't understand YouTube. It was a time where I just didn't know what was happening on YouTube, and so we did our own offline site, and no one came, no one noticed it. So, we noticed that there were people on YouTube, and people were getting views, so we figured, okay, there's already an audience there, so let's just put our content there. And everything we do is through word of mouth. We didn't have a, any publicity, we still don't, everything is just from our friends and family sharing, and people saying, wow, I really like this content, I've never seen anything like this before, let me tell my friends, let me tell my cousins or whoever, and sharing it on Facebook. Social media pushed us further than anything could have ever pushed us, outside of having a publicity major. Um, so that grew our audience, so now we're at, when we first started in 2009, we had like 2,000 subscribers, now we have 90,000, and we have about 7.5 million views total for our video. Great. That's fun. That's fun. Okay, well, Jeffrey and John, so you're in the feature in the TV world. Have you thought about coming over to the web world? Where no. <laughs> this is not enough money. I just need more money than that now. <laughs> but the, um, the the film world has really gotten um, to where you don't have a book or a comic book or a pre-existing title. It, it's it's gotten squeaky, and I think it's going to change soon too because that's all it can do. I mean, I think I think the summer box office was down like a big percentage this year. Um, and I just think it just is going to get too many comic books and too many of this and that. Um, but TV is, it, like we talked about earlier, just gotten so, what do you got that I have never heard before? And the thing that you couldn't imagine selling 10 years ago is exactly what they want now. Like, I can't tell you how many times I got told, why do you have this period thing? And, and then it's like, oh my God, my three period ideas now are getting made in the same like in the same three months, yeah. like three of them that we sold and, and, I mean not sold, but had been so adamant that somebody's gonna want this someday, you know, and now they're on the air. And it's so, I mean, I, it's such a cyclical thing and mm -hmm. I think as one wanes, the other waxes a little bit. So yeah. try to look out for trends and then the other way is don't worry about them at all and just bash your head in there at the time that you got something you care about and that might be when the trend is changing or, like Orange is the New Black, that that is on the air and you watch that and you're like, what TV network would have had that on, you know? Right. Just, uh, Which it means it blazed a new path. Oh my God, yeah, awesome. just comedy yeah. and drama, all, yeah, you, know, don't, you don't want to call it, and you don't, yeah. um, so, I mean, in some ways it is kind of, it's almost webby look yeah. to me because yeah. it just defies what TV ever has been itself. Yeah. And, right. No, this was my first. This was your first. And what what is the creative experience? Like, do you have a writer's room? We do. We have a writer's room. Okay. Um, so it's a pretty traditional room. I don't know that our room varies that much from anything that you would find on network or cable. Um, do you have studio executives that give notes? We do. So um, <coughs> our studio, as it were, is Lionsgate, and our network is. Netflix. Um, I think the big difference, mo I remember having this moment first season where I was, I realized like, oh, this is probably, hopefully I will continue to work at Netflix, but uh, I can pitch anything. Right. <laughs> there are no 
restrictions, right? Like I can pitch like, oh, what if we started on a close up of a vagina? Right. And like that's fine. Right. <laughs> and no one right, like we no, don't have all right, any let's hear. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty freeing and pretty amazing and I would say I mean our I can't sing the phrases of our Netflix executives any higher oh, than wonder I've heard that. They're yeah, really yeah, spectacular. Heard, I mean they say all the time like they hire their whole ethos is hire people who are good at what they do and let them do it. Right. And they really do that beautifully. So right. I think that that's probably the biggest yeah. difference that that I experience. And Brett with Hulu, what what is the creative experience been like there? How do they judge, like with Hulu, like we know with television, we have ratings, with film, we have the box office. Like how, what is the barometer that a show is truly successful on Hulu and how much time do you have to get there? Well, Jen, no one really knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think if a Hulu executive was up here, he'd be like, yeah. <laughs> um, I think at this point it's like a, it's, it has to do with Good quality, right. I guess. Um, you know, I don't know. How do you grow your audience on Hulu? Uh, just, in my opinion, as a, as a content creator, do you just make stuff that people want to watch? Yeah. I mean, when we pitched the show, we were like, this is a show that, like, I would want to watch. You know, we it was we were coming up with it. We knew like Thirty Rock was ending, and like The Office was kind of kind of closing out, and. We were like, what are like the you know rest development had been done for a while? Like, what are some like kind of smart comedies that you know deal with like weird kind of things? And you know, we, we I, so before this, I I wrote on the show Wilfred, right. which is on FX. I love Wilfred. Yeah, so I was on that for a couple of seasons, and we pitched Deadbeat to, to FX first, and we then we went to Comedy Central and HBO and Showtime, and the last one was Amazon, which was like a weird kind of. We were like, Amazon is make you know this is like. 2012, right? Right. And a friend was like, who worked at it was like, bring, come to us. And I was like, you guys make, you guys are making your own stuff? And they were like, yeah. Sure. <laughs> and we were like, all right. So we pitched it to them and we're like, yeah, it's this ghost show. It's a, it's a comedy, but it's like a dark comedy and it's a, you know, it's supernatural, but it's like, you know, it's a guy who talks to ghosts and it's like kind of dark. And they were like, that sounds really good. And I was like, really? They were like, yeah, how much would it cost to make? So we had a line producer come up with a budget, and they were, it was a very low budget. And they were like, that is way too much money for us. <laughs> and we were like, okay, well, I guess we'll go back on another season of Wilfred. And then I think that winter is when Netflix announced House of uh, Cards and Orange is the New Black and Arrested Development. I think Hulu was like, <laughs> so, yeah, so, Hulu, so Hulu went to Lionsgate, okay. who had produced Orange is the New Black, okay. and they were like, you did that show for them, what about us? And Lionsgate was like, well, what do you have? And I guess Kevin Beck of Lionsgate read a bunch of stuff, and he was like, what is this weird ghost show? Like, this is, this is something that you would not find on TV. Right. Um, How many minutes is an episode? 22 minutes, right. same as like, an, which which was a weird thing, right. because we were like, oh, it's online, we can, how long, and Lulu was like, oh, we can make it, you know, anything under 30 minutes. So we wrote these like 32, 33 page scripts, and then like three weeks into filming it, Lionsgate called us, like three weeks into production of a 10 week production, and Lionsgate was like, these need to be 22 minutes, and we were like, why? And they're like, because we need to sell the show yeah. internationally, the TV, really? where it has to fit into the, and we were like, okay. Why didn't you, no one told no one telling us anything? So it was kind of this moment of like, oh shit! So all of a sudden you're taking like ten minutes out of a thirty minute story, yeah. and it's not just I don't know. So and you're like, oh, you guys have no idea what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> yeah, but we were just we were like, okay, well, well, you know, like we made it work the best we could, and I think this year now we know what we're dealing with. So hopefully season two is going to be like a little bit better. How many episodes do you do, and how many do you write? Uh, we we did ten episodes last year, and, and we got thirteen.